when God says it's a year of something, it's not as if he doesn't do that all the time, but he's telling you where his emphasis is in this time. Your husband can look at you and be like, hey, baby, I love your eyes. Does he doesn't like that part of your body? But at this moment when he's looking at you, it's your eye that is giving him attention. God looks at the whole year and says, this is what I'm doing. It's a year of laughter and what? Undeniable exploit. But the question is, what does this mean? Genesis 21, where did this come from? Verse 6. Oh, this is where the year of laughter comes from. And Sarah said, the Lord has made me laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. What does the year of laughter mean? Number one, the year of laughter means that long-standing issue will be dissolved. But not just that. He said, the kind of testimony that God gave me was a communal testimony. That the people that heard also what? Laughed with me. Let me tell you something eh? There are testimonies you can hide. There are testimonies you cannot hide. But the one that Sarah spoke about, it was a testimony that she couldn't hide. Because the testimony had noise, the cry of a baby. There are testimonies that cannot talk, but your own testimony will talk. He says, the Lord has made me laugh. And them that hear, because they will hear. When the Lord says that you have laughter, it's not just that you will laugh. It's that you will have testimonies that are visible. Oh, say that's my story. Why do we call this exploit? God says you will possess nations that are mightier and stronger than you. You will do things beyond natural ability. If you understand the prophetic word, you will know one of the key things about the prophetic indicators is this. This year has to do with a lot of pioneering, starting new things. He says you are to pass over. You've been doing business in 10 million and 20 million. God says pass over to the other side. There are industry where entry barrier is very high. God says such industries I will give to you. So we're going to be starting new things. Secondly, it's also the year of big thinking because it takes big thinking to even achieve some things. Small thinking is going to be thrown out of the window. We're going to be thinking big right now. The third thing is this. It's the year of doing. It's the year of courage and doing. We will not just be praying. You don't possess by prayer. You possess by doing. He says, it's your year of intervention. You will have divine presence. You will not do this alone. He said, the Lord shall go before you. The fifth one is this. It's the year of spirit food living. It's a year where you partner with the Holy Ghost. The things that God has promised you were promised by the Spirit. They will be delivered by spiritual power. One commitment you must make this year is this. Whatever God has told me to do, I will do it. It may hurt my flesh. It may kill my flesh. But I'm bent on it. All these excuses. And you know, I'm not pray- you will learn prayer. You will learn Bible study. You will learn how to hear the voice of God. To give yourself to spiritual training. I don't want you to settle for just coming to church. Because you can go to Koei Blood without being a member. Don't settle for church coming. Settle for encounters with Holy Ghost. Settle for encounters with God. Settle for genuine thirst, genuine pursuit of the kingdom. This year, God will use you as a reference point to prayer. When your friends are praying, they will say, Lord, this is what you did it for. Do my own. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. The thing you've been planning for a long time, the way it will happen, it will shock you. But how do we start? We enforce by prayer. That's why this wine press, I plead with everyone. I know that some of you are sophisticated. You only do Sundays. This is not the time for sophistication. This is time for raw, raw power. Raw power. I say, Lord, I'm ready for you. You say, Lord, I'm serious with you. Be serious with me. The next thing is this. You become conscious of the prophecy. The next thing is you begin to take actions. You can't be saying that it's exploit and be planning like a millipede. Plan. Where is our Dubai office opening? Where is our UK office opening? How do we make the first 10 million dollars? Exploit nature. Break boundaries. Do things that nobody in your family has ever done. Open the door for your family members. Take actions. And the last thing is that, fuel it with thanksgiving. In your speech, in your giving. Thanking God that it's done. God never promised you don't have challenges. He only promised you have victory. There cannot be victory without battles. See, for God to promise you victory, there must be battles. Because if there's nothing to win, how do you become a victor? God gives prophecy for us to what? Have something to hold on to. Is anybody that's engaged here that has an engagement ring? Anybody here? Here you come, my sister. Thank you. I didn't know times your friends say that this boy that is in Canada. Are you sure of what he's doing? Do they say that to you once in a while? Yes. Yes. Good. Anytime you feel unsafe, do you find yourself looking at your ring and say, but I'm engaged? I always touch it. <laughs> <laughs> when you touch it, what happens to you? I feel better. You know what God is saying? When you go through tough time, your word is the ring you touch so that you can feel assured. 
when you go to the hospital and the doctor says that I'm sorry, um, the way I see it, they, they begin to speak big English and write writings you cannot understand and say, eventually you can't have a child. You say, wow, you, you touch your ring and say, I feel assured. When you're going through a big breakup and you've been set breakfast, you touch your ring and you say, I feel assured. When, when you get the disappointment and you're rejected, you touch your ring and you say, I'm assured. You keep touching your ring, you'll get to match and match begins to misbehave. And all of a sudden there's a delay somewhere. You say, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I know why I believe. He gave me a ring. I, I know why I believe. When you get to July and they say something happened with dollar, you don't say, hey, I'm feeling. You say, I know why I believe. Because the ring gives me what? Assured. The question is that, when life is challenging to you, what do you touch? God uses prophecies as tools to open our mind to possibilities. There are certain possibilities that you may never have except prophecy. Noah had never thought in his life of a concept called rain until God spoke to him. And what God told him was rain was coming. Mary had never thought about the fact that a virgin could have a child until God spoke to him that a virgin could have a child. So prophecy is God's tool to open our eyes up to possibilities. There are possibilities of the spiritual. First Corinthians chapter 2. The Bible says in verse 9, the reason why God reveals is because prophecy is God's tool for expanding our minds. Because as human beings, the tendency to look at life from where you are and look at life based on what you see is what you do. But God goes into a higher dimension and shows you something deeper. I'm saying again, prophecy are tools for God to open our mind and show us new possibilities. It says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered to the heart of man. The things that God has kept in store, but God has revealed to man. The question is that, what picture is God trying to show you that you're pulling away from? Prophecy gives you something to hold on to when the days are dark and tough. There will be times in your life that your life wants to fall apart. Prophecy holds you up. What holds this chosen hub is the belt. The belt is what? An anchor. Most people want to hold on to things that cannot last. And when the days are tough, because now it's New Year, everybody's emotion is high. Everybody has energy. How? Oh, it's a New Year. Oh, big resolution. This and this and that and that. But by the time February hits you, like I beg, just another year, everyone was excited. But when you have an anchor, an anchor that's not based on emotion, you can go back and say, "This is what God said." That's an anchor. That. How does prophecy hold you up? You do a business, you lose money. You do this, you do this. And you remember that you, say, you, you want to look confused, you want to look drained. Then you remember what God has told you. What has he told you? God has told you that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You're not saying, although I cannot understand what is happening, but the word of God said this, that place of holding on to something is an anchor. 